so um, it's an honor uh, and i'm really thankful to you for giving me an opportunity to introduce uh, my own guru my boss uh, dr p s isa uh, isa sir uh, uh, is the for people who don't know uh, dr isa i'm sure most of the people in the participant list know him really well but for, there are some people who are uh, from outside our community so for them uh, dr isa retired as a director from kerala forest research institute uh, he had been uh, working on wildlife since last uh, 35 40 years and uh, dr p s isa is an encyclopedia on wildlife he had been in lot of uh, committees he He is a member of National Wide Wildlife Advisory Board. He is a member of uh, he, uh, he was a member of State Wildlife Advisory Board of Kerala as well as Chhattisgarh. So again, yeah, uh, uh, with a uh, great pleasure, uh, we uh, Green Pixels and our Nikam Society invite uh, you, sir, uh, for a presentation and a discussion, uh, like uh, after the talk. And once again, on behalf of Green Pixels, uh, we thank you. uh for spending your quality time on this uh, special tiger day with us thank you sir and over to you yeah thank you especially uh, ali and uh, his team for giving me this opportunity this is also a learning process for me because you know i'm first time i'm using this google meet so now i know how to what to do and how to do that so and the second thing is you know i'm doing first time i am doing a presentation the webinar uh, that is also a learning process the third is that you know i am meeting a lot of people who used to be there for a long time with uh, in different on different occasions we have met so i was just seeing you know uh, uh, viramani and vijesh and a lot of people anyway that's all good so i think uh, see my idea is to make a brief presentation i don't think you know we should give a, a lot of time we should spend a lot of time because you know there are researchers there are uh, wildlife photographers with a lot of experience in the field and with a lot of observations so it will be uh, i will mention it briefly what are the current uh, uh, maybe a background on the the tiger itself say for example uh, this is evolved for a million years Sir, uh... ago Yeah. Excuse me, sir. One second. Uh, so, for the yeah. participants, uh, it will be great if you can please switch off your videos so that uh, it will be clear for everyone. The bandwidth would be okay. So, if you can What please switch. What is that? Uh, participants, in order. Our video on the camera here, no, sir. All okay, the okay, video okay, on the camera. Okay. 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 participants kindly note that uh, please switch off your video and uh, you can watch it in the screen uh, over to you sir thank you yeah i mean if you look at the evolution it was about over a million years ago in the current uh, or the present china area this was evolved or believed to be believed to have evolved and amo tiger or south china tiger uh, has the primitive skull with uh, all the features Uh, with the forward in facing forward facing eye sockets and a small, small brain case and from eastern asia tiger spread northwards towards siberia and westwards uh, oh. north of tibetan plateau to reach the caspian sea and eastern turkey so basically this also, and also some cross to the island of sumatra java and bali uh, then myanmar and indian subcontinent so here you can see definitely the, how it has gone how it has moved and this is a sort of uh, uh, this shows exactly where were the tigers in 1900 and where are they now uh, and if you get, if you see that you now you can definitely come to a conclusion that you know the range of tiger has shrunk like anything and most of the areas where a tiger used to exist has completely gone so this is the again the historical range and uh, we have uh, the the uh, caspian tiger which is extinct so you can see that here yeah this is the area where uh, the caspian tiger was uh, seen earlier and uh, the of course the bengal tiger which occupies which is the most uh, pop, uh, if you look at the population the number wise you know ti bengal tiger is uh, dominating and then you have the indochina indo chinese tiger 
uh, of course the color is not very clear but it is still there yeah it is still there and then siberian tiger the largest one which occupies the the coldest area and then you have uh, the uh, south china tiger javan tiger which is extinct and then sumatra tiger and then you have the extinct uh, balinese tiger so this is a situation or this is the current uh, uh, scenario on the distribution and also where are the uh, the locations of the the current tiger population see the balinese tiger uh, which became uh, extinct uh, the last was uh, in uh, west bali on 27 september 1937 so uh, this is because you know in most of the places in bali and other places have uh, converted ag uh, forest areas uh, for agriculture and then uh, uh, shrinking the habitat uh, so uh, i think you know the most interesting statement here is that as early as the mid 1930s most balinese tiger were museum or trophy specimens so uh, that's the end of it. And by 1937, it became, when it is declared as extinct. Cap Caspian tiger, again, the third largest in the world. Uh, we have seen the uh, distribution in, uh, in areas like Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Turkey, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. So all the sun. Uh, again, it is considered to be, to have adapted to different climate and areas, uh, but extinct by 1950s. Here, I think, you know, the most important part is that, you know, it is considered to have adapted to different climates and areas. Even then, it became extinct because of the habitat loss. So that is a crucial one. So it doesn't mean that, you know, even if you have a good population in different habitat, in different climate uh, situations, that's no surety that, you know, this will last for long. So if you are losing the habitat. Javan tiger, again, uh, is isolated in an, in an island uh, situation. And uh, the Tiger Foundation, uh, uh, repo, there was a reports of, uh, uh, from Indonesian park rangers on tiger sightings in and around some of the national parks in Eastern Java. But uh, they, they, that was found to be wrong because of the, because the genetic studies and others were done and, you know, so it became extinct, but uh, no fewer than uh, 50 years. And unless you have the absence, uh, anyway, last observation was in 1972, it is considered extinct. The South China tiger uh, on the brink of extinction, very, very few reports, around 4,000 individuals are considered to be there. Uh, but as you know, the, there will be very few reports coming out from China on these things. So, and also the inbreeding problem is there because of the small populations in uh, different places. Uh, hunting was the major issue here. The Siberian tiger, which is uh, in Russia, and you know, it, it is, uh, I think, you know, this is the one, you know, with the, the largest home range because of the obvious reason of very few uh, prey species and the vegetation in different areas of, uh, in the cold climate. So low prey densities, limited number of uh, tigers are very uh, few in these areas. It is also sometimes uh, referred as the Amur tiger. And uh, it is mentioned as uh, the more are there in captivity than in the, in the wild. Sumatran tiger smallest of the living species. In fact, uh, I've taken some of these uh, photographs in the background, you know, from uh, Sumatra itself, you know, where I went to their museum and had taken. Uh, but a heavily fragmented uh, population and around 400 to 500. See, uh, these numbers, you have to take a, not a pinch of salt, you know, but a cup of salt, because in most of these places, unlike uh, India, uh, they don't have any a mechanism for uh, continuous monitoring and you know camera trapping and other things in some parts of course you know they do camera trapping and you know current uh, they they are coming up with some better uh, good quality data now otherwise you know most of these places you, you have the, the problem and this is the corbett tiger or indo chinese or malayan tiger 
this is considered to be a separate subspecies in 1968 uh, uh, because you know the, this was described from central Vietnam uh, coastal town of uh, Narang, Natrang, yeah. Now it is found in Laos, uh, part of China, southern China, and then Vietnam, Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, and eastern M Myanmar. There are some uh, uh, photographs uh, appearing in the uh, journals and also in uh, some of the uh, websites of uh, tigers, you know, recently shot in camera. So around 300 is considered to be. See, uh, again, I think uh, I would compare the, these figures, you know, with that of elephant. You know, these are the countries, you know, like Vietnam and other places. If you, these are the countries where they don't have even a correct figure on the elephant uh, distribution. So forget about tiger then, which is elusive. So that's the situation in most of these places. You have more Bengal tigers than uh, roaming in the wild than any other species, which I have already mentioned. And uh, around 3,000 to 4,500 individuals. Now, definitely, we have a better figure at least for India and a part of uh, uh, other places also, uh, especially Bangladesh and Bhutan, because they are taking a lot of interest. Now, Myanmar, you have problems because, you know, very difficult to uh, conduct uh, surveys and other uh, details. So, but as you know, you have more tigers in the, in the, in captivity than in the wild. I mean, if you take any tiger uh, uh, species, you know, you have more in the, wild. Now, in uh, there was a person called Kailash Shankla. Uh, he was from the Rajasthan uh, cadre of the forest uh, of uh, IFS, Indian Forest Service. And, you know, he made, uh, he first made the alarm call on, on the tiger population. And the whole thing was presented, uh, the uh, uh, he made a presentation to uh, Mrs. Gandhi, Indira Gandhi, that time, you know, and uh, mentioned about the problem, uh, especially because, you know, in 1972, tiger census, less than 2,000 tigers in India. But uh, there were problems, you know, because uh, if you look at the, the, the method followed, of course, you have a problem. Anyway, it was around 1,700 or so uh, tigers uh, estimated that time. So these are the, the milestones in uh, conservation uh, in the IUCN meetings, uh, which reached up to IUCN, and uh, we had gone for Project Tiger. Then Tiger Task Force was formed, you know, which suggested uh, Project Tiger programs, declaring tiger reserves. And then in uh, this HR Mishra, Hemantar Mishra is from Nepal, and HS Power uh, also talked about uh, these issues in the World Park Congress. So, and then in 1993, uh, 20th anniversary of Project Tiger, that was the year of the 20th anniversary of the project. Global Tiger Forum for uh, Rain States was formed. I was lucky to be present there, and I was a participant in this uh, Global Tiger Forum uh, formation meeting. A lot of, of course, you know, a lot of politics was there. Who should be the director or who should be, I mean, there was a lot of lobbying by the, whether it should be a conservationist or uh, uh, it should be a forest officer. So a lot of issues were there. I know ultimately Dr. Rajesh Gopal was uh, the, I mean, uh, not Rajesh Gopal, before that, you know, uh, ultimately a forest officer was made. So, there had been, uh, now we have around uh, 50,000, uh, I mean, 50 tiger reserves declared uh, in different places. So this is an old uh, photograph. Uh, and the last one was uh, Kamlang in Arunachal Pradesh and then Orang uh, in uh, Assam, Orang National Park. Orang is also famous for rhinos. And the tiger reserves, you know, around uh, 70,500 or 71,000 uh, square kilometers in 50 tiger reserves. This is a major initiative. Now, if you ask me what is so important, if you are protecting the area, even without having a sanctuary or a national park or a tiger reserve, we can definitely uh, conserve all the species, including tiger. Now, the, the importance is that, you know, the moment you declare an area as a tiger reserve, you have the better possibilities of getting funds, you know, from the central government earmarked for tiger conservation, which will ultimately help uh, the ecosystem as a whole and also the other uh, uh, activities like uh, eco-developmental activities, the social aspect of it. So 
that is the most important thing now if you look at uh, most uh, there are issues you know people will definitely say that oh there are problems you know because you have lot of uh, tigers around so the population of prey species like deer or uh, even the wild boar or gaur is uh, getting diminished but that need not be true because you know in uh, most of the attempt for in the hunting at least uh, 90% of its uh, attempt to catch the prey is a failure so uh, normally it is mentioned it as that it cannot eliminate a prey population and uh, uh, in fact you know it is considered to have a limited impact on the uh, prey populations because of the the hunting behavior now it is it is actually stalking i mean it is it is hiding and then uh, stalking you know when the animal is sometimes you know this happens but if you look at uh, most of the i'm sure the photographers will definitely have a better uh, comment on that because you know if you look at uh, most of the this is this will be the the uh, best technique adopted by tiger uh, for while hunting uh, the attack is from behind and also the tiger will be feeding only a part of the uh, uh, tiger i mean hunted uh, prey species so the rest is dragged to the nearby uh, hiding area maybe under a shrub and then uh, it will come on and off and then will be feeding this is very interesting because you know uh, the the animal is actually the animal unlike leopard the leopard will be using it as a catcher and then it will carry or take it to the top of the tree or somewhere you no know, it will be hiding but this fellow will have no chance you know because others other animals also will be preying on this in the absence of the tiger uh, if they are not present here so it takes days you know for the animal to completely feed on the uh, yeah on the, on the uh, prey which is caught so it is really very powerful and you know it can drag even very heavy animals like uh, uh, the tiger i remember one of the uh, participants in an interview of uh, psc he appeared for an interview in the psc uh, he has a lot of experience you know he was one of the participants in the first uh, uh, ever tiger survey in kerala that was done in periya tiger reserve long back in 70s uh, the end of 70s so he appeared for the uh, interview in the psc so the, the one of the experts so called expert asked him so do you think uh, uh, the elephant uh, is being preyed upon by tiger he said yes we have seen pug marks uh, after the on the uh, elephant trail uh but uh, he said no you are completely wrong and that fellow was not selected just because you know he was arguing that you no know, it is possible and he has uh, several examples from, from different people especially working in peria so but actually it is happening so sometimes that happens you know because the experts need not know everything uh so this is the the situation here i mean uh, there had been incidences of tiger preying on uh, elephant especially even up to the juvenile stage you know there was a photograph camera trap photograph from uh, silent valley national park you know uh, i think uh, about 5 uh, years or 6 years back it was there so in several places you know this is happening so the tiger uh, breeds at the age of around 3 to 6 years old and uh, year round mating is reported but mostly from november to early april and i think you know this is very relevant especially if you look at the human uh, tiger conflict or what we call the conflict or interaction in the interface in why not where uh, most of these are occurring if you look at the, the graph and you will definitely understand that you no know, most of the problems are during this period you know when you have the the tiger coming out and then uh, mating period and then you have uh, the the juveniles uh, which are searching for more uh, new home ranges new areas to be established so that that's a problem uh, anyway we will discuss it later the, and about 103 days of uh, gestation normally 2 to 5 cubs are born so it is the business of the female uh, the bringing up of the uh, the cubs is the business of the female and uh, it becomes independent only at the age of 18 to 28 months old and uh, females usually breed every 2 to 2.5 years some 2 and 1/2 years 
see if you look at uh, these situations you know there is also something called uh, the the males are also going for uh, feeding on the cups that that is also happening in some places uh, we have uh, records of uh, babies uh, i mean cups getting killed by the males in periyar where we thought first thought that you know it was killed by the elephant uh, trampled by elephant but it was actually the situation was different so infanticide uh, among the infanticide is most popularly known among the monkeys but it has also been reported from even in our cats you know we say at home that you know if the, the male is around you know the mother is very careful and even the owner or the fellow who is taking care of the cat is also bothered you know, if the male is around because that fellow this is an infanticide anyway we if somebody is interested we can definitely talk about it later so there is a training definitely for the cubs also on hunting and you know how uh, it should be shared and how they keep it and everything is there socializing is there or the uh, if you look at the age the oldest is in the wild is known to be have uh, was have around 15 and a few years and in captivity they are reported to live up to 26 years so they are also good climbers and good swimmers uh, there was a record of uh, swimming distance of around 29 km so they are very good swimmers and you know that you know at the the they go go for uh, cooling off in the in the water and uh, a number of photographs have been seen the question is of uh, home range of a tiger home range is the area which is you normally used by any animal for its uh, day to day affairs you know like for for, for for predation or for food and for water and other requirements uh, it can be up to 1000 uh, square kilometer and the largest uh, of course i mentioned it uh, earlier that it is in siberia 10500 square kilometer a lot of work Uh, with the radio transmitter attached is uh, being done in uh, siberia because that is the only way there uh, where uh, you can make observations so the range varies depending on the density the home range size varies depending on the density of prey species the type of habitat of course the type of habitat has impact on the type of, on the on the density of prey species and the type of prey species one can expect so naturally everything uh, has a, a say on the on the size of the home range so but it's interesting because you know if you look at the home range size as per record and uh, uh, i think uh, the the, uh, the nagarhole there had been records of uh, tiger using only 50 square kilometer so it depends uh, and you have a higher density of tiger in some of the areas say for example people now talk about uh, the density of tigers in wayanad where you have uh, more number of tigers in a smaller area and probably that is attributed as one of the reasons you know for uh, uh, the tiger human interface there you know that you know this being a, a predator especially a large predator it has to it has the uh, the method of uh, scent yeah. marking yeah. and you can see the scent marking you know the the animal is using in the urine for uh, marking this is basically to mark the territory of the animal and there could be other methods also even the uh, if you have seen the tiger cat it smells oh, i mean awfully uh, very very bad smell is there uh, and in most of the places you know you can see this uh, being uh, sprayed there are uh, people you now with a lot of experience especially the former hunters i have been with a fellow in the field uh, i mean when uh, with a former hunter and you know he was smelling and he said there is a presence of a tiger here around and of course you know we didn't see the tiger but we saw the the very fresh uh, scat and also the pug marks and everything very close to us so there are people who can definitely identify such areas now what is a major issue here even in the last uh, uh, there was a workshop on in 2019 organized by national tiger conservation authority to discuss the uh, the problem of uh, human tiger conflict where uh, near the major issue was considered to be the connectivity or the areas getting shrunk and you had the problem of tiger i um, mean tiger areas getting uh, fragmented so this is uh, the tiger habitat 
uh, in Rajaji Karbat Dudwa that uh, uh, up to Valmiki Tiger Reserve of uh, Bihar. You have the, the problem it, he, even here no it is in nine continuous discontinuous blocks so there are issues in between so if you even if you say that you have the rajaji now tiger reserve and the corbett tiger reserve Dudua, and all these places are there even then you have the problem because these are all can be considered as islands you know if you are talking of course not in the real sense of island being smaller but there are bigger islands and smaller islands the connectivity is a major problem. Here again, you are seeing the same thing. You have uh, the uh, tiger in Rajaji around uh, 8 to 15 that time in uh, 736 square kilometer in Kabat, which is very, uh, very large actually in, with the, around 2,300 square kilometers. And then Dudua. But if you look at the map here, you can definitely see that you know, there are problems in between. And... Uh, even the so-called contiguous areas within the tiger reserves are also discontinuous. Uh, I had the opportunity to work in uh, Valmiki Tiger Reserve for about two years, uh, working mostly with the people. Actually, I, I was concentrating on that, you know, because of the poverty. People are depending a lot on the forest, and they have the problems. I even that time, you know, we have got uh, in camera trap, we have got uh, two, three tigers. Yeah, one tiger and two cubs. That time. Uh, but even there, you have the problem. Uh, though we can say that is is discontinuous with the part of Nepal, but still, in most of the tiger reserves, you have the problems of human settlements inside. And this is considered to be the Central India and Eastern Ghats areas, you know, where you have uh, uh, a number of uh, protected areas. You know, the tiger reserves and everything is there. But even here, if you look at this, you have the problems. You have the, the human dominated uh, landscapes in some of these areas. So that's a major problem in most of these areas. And if you look at this, see, look at this, Sariska. And I would say that you know, people are talking about high about Randambur. And uh, I don't think, you know, Randambur, of course, you have a good population of tiger. Doesn't mean that you know, it is going to be there for a long time because Randambur again is an island. With not much connectivity with the nearby areas, you know, you can probably say that you have connectivity with uh, Kuno, Shopur, or Mathau, uh, but it's not enough for a tiger, for for a, a conservation of a species like tiger, which require larger number, and you know, we will come to that uh, number and also the area requirement. And Sariska, again, everybody was boasting about Sariska and other places having so many tigers, but we had the Sariska shock which led to several other. Uh, now, if you come to the Western Ghats, you know, you have the single largest population of about, now it is not 400, it is much more than that. And of course, you know, there had been a lot of work uh, being done in uh, Nagarhole. And then we have uh, the KMTR, uh, the Kalakada Mundandre Tiger Reserve and the Piriya Tiger Reserve. And now you have uh, the, what is that, you know, the Grizzly and Squirrel Sanctuary, which is also a part of the Tiger Reserve. So several uh, series of uh, national parks and uh, protected areas like sanctuaries, national parks, and tiger reserves. And uh, if you look at uh, these Nagarhole, Mudumale, Vainat, Belt and Kudremuk, Badra, and you have the, the other places in Karnataka, the, uh, R, the DRT, and also the other places in the adjacent to that areas in Tamil Nadu. So we have a larger population and larger contiguous areas. And probably this is the area. This is a landscape which needs attention and which has to be protected for a long time, on a long-term basis, because this is an uh, area where we have the largest population of Asian elephants and we have the largest population of tiger also. And probably without, uh, of course, you have some problems in uh, areas like Wayanad with a lot of settlements around. But at the same time, you know, you have uh, also the good population and uh, uh, the the uh, the diversity of habitat, you know, so you have it from the dry deciduous to the scrub jungle to the the grassland shola systems of the uh, Mukurti, so in the Nilgiris, so a very diverse habitat and very large extent of areas, uh, even with the problems, I think you know, or everybody consider this as the best uh, area for conservation. That's why it is definitely a part of the biodiversity hotspot. Now, another challenge is definitely coming from China. China is the place, you know, for uh, for most of these uh, uh, 
കൺസർവേഷൻ ചലഞ്ചസ് ആറ് ഇൻ ചൈന ഓർ നിയർ ബൈ ഏരിയാസ് സൗത്ത് കൊറിയ ആൻഡ് അതർ പ്ലേസസ് ബോർഡർ ഏരിയ so uh, this is a major issue in fact you know there was an issue of tiger farming there was a suggestion from china the chinese government that you know they want to go for tiger farming a lot of international law being stopped it because you know then uh, maybe people will feel that okay anyway they they are using a lot of uh, tiger skeleton and uh, tiger skin and everything for medicinal purposes so why don't we allow them to go for tiger farming but the question is in the name of the tiger once you allow the tiger farming you know there is a possibility of tiger getting killed elsewhere and then brought there and they will claim that you know it is of uh, it is the, from their farm and uh, in china it is very difficult to, to monitor uh, things even the chinese researchers are uh, finding it difficult recently uh, when we had the asian elephant species group meeting in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, malaysian part uh, malaysia we had the problem because you know there were uh, issues raised by some people some researchers from myanmar and from thailand that elephant skin is being used to make pendant and also other uh, ornaments so that means you know it's not just the tusk tuskers which are under threat it is the elephant itself the uh, irrespective of the sex so the and age the elephants are under threat and there was a lot of objections from the chinese government representatives who said that no we don't agree and uh, the, the 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 forum should not be used for such political gimmicks and a uh, lot of issues but of course uh, there are uh, photographs and there are videos you know which shows and even the website they they have uh, advertised that you know whoever wants pendant of elephant skin can be can approach so and so so that is also there so these are the figures you know from taiwan and from china and uh, in fact in some of the places in thailand you know you can see the monks you must have seen the photographs and also the videos of the monks taking care of uh, uh, the tiger and uh, and i was just walking through the streets in uh, one of the streets in bangkok long back in when i went for iucn uh, congress so there uh, i was just noticing an a cat in the in the in one of through the glass of a house or i consider it as a house then after some time i thought no it cannot be just a cat it looks like a tiger cub i came i went back and saw that you know, it is a tiger cub and it is uh, a veterinary clinic or so so people are using it people are keeping it as a pet or something like that maybe ultimately ending up in the in the uh, medicinal uh, use so that's a problem so if you look at this habitat loss is considered to be the major problems in any case in any conservation issues i mean conservation of any species or the conservation of ecosystems you know you have this problem the loss of the uh, their habitat is the major issues but when it comes to the uh, uh, predators like the tiger see you have the uh, most of the areas you have the tiger you have the leopard and you have uh, the uh, the wild dogs and of course you know other animals like uh, hyenas and other animals also around so there is a competition and definitely we must have enough prey species in these areas even if we claim that the no a prey will become extinct because of the tiger or any other predator at the same time we should ensure that you know we have enough of these in the in the uh, in the system so to support good uh, population of uh, uh tiger and uh, other predators what we call co-predators so this is of course you know this is a problem and in, there are some studies and you know observations from different areas <coughs> where people are talking about uh, the uh, prey being and hunting skin and trophies you know we have the historical uh details you know from uh, different areas even in india uh and in the uh, tigers were declared as a pest uh in the in china long back we have also had a plan i mean we have the historical uh, evidences uh, saying that uh, the the tail of a wild dog was rewarded uh, because you know wild dog was considered to be a pest in some places even in kerala so uh, this is the one you know which i was talking about the photo of a thai buddhist monk uh giving water 
from a bottle to a tiger. So you can probably say that, oh, wonderful. But at the same time, you know, there are issues. You know, these tigers are not going to be there throughout. And, you know, tourist uh, private zoo in China. Uh, so these are the, again, tiger skin and bond products are laid out on a table by National Park. They, this was a capture. Uh, this was a confiscation in West Bangor, Bangkok. And uh, look at this, you know, even the, the smaller ones, the dead tiger cubs. I don't know whether you can call it as a tiger cub as such. Maybe an embryo or something like that, or just bone. So all these are happening in most of these places and uh, tiger skin. Uh, even if we say that, you know, there is no problem in Kerala or India, there is still there are issues. Whenever we say that, no, there is no tiger poaching or there is no poaching at all. You can't think of a situation like uh, zero poaching. It is there. And, you know, mostly we are depending on the tiger scat and, uh, I mean, for evidences. Anyway, I think, you know, we will come to this later. Earlier, we had been using the tiger pug mark uh, as the census technique to uh, go for a number of the uh, animals in an area. And you have the males, you know, in a square and the female in a rectangle so all these have been used and the photographs later and then we were using the the pugma traces uh, for uh, uh, tiger population estimation but later we have come to the the uh, the camera trapping technique uh, i think you know viramani has a lot of experience of using this technique in peria when he was in peria as a uh, conservation biologist so I think, I don't know whether I have taken it from Viramani himself, these uh, photographs of uh, animals you know, from Peria. So this is definitely from Valmiki Tiger Reserve in 2006. Yes, we got it in the camera trap there. Maybe the first camera, uh, first uh, photograph of Tiger from Valmiki. This is also from there. So in, uh, we had the Seriska shock where uh, people had been claiming that, you know, they have around 60 tigers and, you know, so many things are there. But all of a sudden, researchers found that, you know, they don't have any tiger. There was not even a sign of a tiger. So there were issues. Uh, and then, which led to the formation of a committee. And uh, the committee, the task force. And interestingly, the tiger task force, that time, uh, at the time of Manmohan Singh, you know, it was uh, led by a social scientist, and uh, people had been asking, you know, what, what uh, they have to do with that. And in which people like uh, Gadgil and Pavar with a lot of experience with Taiga and with, uh, who was also the, uh, with the Wildlife Minister of India had been members. You know, but that, that was the most interesting part of it. And they came up with a report, the joining the doubts. That is a really good uh, initiative by the government of India. And uh, uh, then came the amendment of the Wildlife Protection Act uh, in 2006. See, if you look at uh, the, uh, the Wildlife Protection Act or even the Tiger Reserves, the Tiger Reserves before 2006 had the protection or the coverage was only the uh, under the, only if it is a sanctuary or a national park, it has a protection. It has the legal uh, sanctity. Otherwise, it, it had, as a tiger reserve, it didn't have any standing as such. But 2006 amendment uh, even defined what is core of a tiger habitat and what is a tiger reserve and what is a uh, habitat. So likewise, you know, several uh, uh, things happened with this. And uh, what is a tiger reserve and what is a tiger habitat and what is a core or critical tiger habitat and what is a buffer? Everything has been, normally people call it as a buffer. Say, for example, in some places, we, if you go to a sanctuary or national park, buffer is only for management. It doesn't have any, any legal sanctity as such. But the Wildlife Protection Act Amendment in 2006, with regard to tiger conservation, with regard to tiger reserves, the defined buffer. And so basically giving a uh, legal uh, support to the concept of buffer. Otherwise, it was a management uh, uh, area only. So this is also important, you know, because uh, the uh, you cannot just declare a buffer without consulting. So you must consult the people in that area. 
uh, if they are there in the surrounding, wherever you plan to do that. And the declaration of buffer should be without affecting the, the developmental activities and without affecting the social and cultural rights of the local people. And this was the time uh, when uh, we had that uh, Forest Rights Act also came. Uh, so it should be in consultation with the uh, concerned Gram Sabha and an expert committee. So if you look at uh, Parambukulam and Periyar, I was a member of the three member team uh, of experts, you know, uh, to declare, de to delineate boundary of uh, Periyar and Parambukulam. So that time we had uh, extensive consultation with the people who were who were all uh, there and in the surroundings. And uh, we had their consent also to declare it as a buffer or a curve or whatever we call it. So that is very, very important. And maybe, uh, unlike Kerala, I don't think you know, any other state has done that extensive uh, consultation. And wherever they had gone, say, for example, in some places, uh, I think you know, people used to blame me, uh, especially me, because Dr. Balasubramaniam and myself and uh, then our chief ally order of that time. I think you know, we had three chief ally order joining the team because you know, they were shifted or retired or uh, so that time, you know, we were found fault for not declaring Nelliampati estates as in the in the buffer, not including it in the buffer. I think uh, even in a meeting, you know, of course, I didn't uh, go and defend it because it is left to the ignorant people to make uh, comments on that. Uh, so at that time, uh, we actually proposed Nelliampati as a part of the uh, Tiger Reserve buffer of Parambikla. But uh, when we presented it before the chief, uh, before the chief conservators, the senior officers meeting, there was a suggestion that if you are going to insist that the estates should be brought under buffer, there will be a lot of pressure from the estate lobbies, and ultimately it will affect the entire area being declared as a tiger reserve. So <laughs> I had the bitter experience of uh, the politician letting me down because you know he had promised that okay we will definitely do that we want to protect the environment but at the meeting he said we won't allow any tiger to be introduced in this area as if you know we are where we had been going to introduce tigers anyway so i think it, at some time you know we may have to go for a compromise and definitely uh, even if nelliampadi is not a part of the tiger reserve or a buffer of the tiger reserve it is going to be under scanner under monitoring because you know it is very close to the the tiger reserves, so there may be such issues like that. Now another issue is a minimum population of tigers in breeding age. This need, a, uh, so you must have a minimum viable population. That means you know you must have a minimum number of tigers in the, at the breeding age, which is considered to be 80 to 100 tigers, and in an inviolate space of 800 to 1000 square kilometers. This is the theory. In practice, if you look at the most of the tiger reserves, you may not have these 100 tigers. You may not have the 80 to 1,000 square kilometers. Maybe in most of the areas, yes, we have 1,000 square kilometers. Or, uh, say, for example, in Sri Shailam and other places, you know, you have larger areas. So it doesn't matter. But at the same time, then uh, definitely the question came in the, in the Kerala context. The question came, how can you have uh, a tiger reserve in Parambikulam? Because you don't have these many tigers and you don't have these many areas or especially inviolate areas you don't have but you look at uh, the anomaly tiger reserve the anomaly tiger reserve along with the perambiculum will definitely meet these requirements you have uh, a very good uh, extent of the area and also you have a good population of tiger and i think you know, we should not insist that you must have these many tigers at present is there any possibility does it does the area have a carrying capacity to have so many tigers i think you know that is also crucial and the buffer area this is where i think you know, a lot of uh, misunderstanding is there especially among the people and even the policy makers and the politicians uh the multiple it is considered to be multiple use area the buffer of around thousand to three thousand square kilometer would be the ideal and it should be around the inviolate space i think you know the buffer should be a buffer it should absorb all the pressures on the inviolate area of the code but unfortunately people feel that okay buffer can be on the one side and you know inviolate area can be the uh, other side that is not correct so uh, and in some places uh, for example in uh, there was a proposal to have a buffer uh, to declare Vayanad as a buffer to uh, uh, bandipura mudumale and you know nagarhole so that 
you have a contiguous area assigned, that will also help to get more financial assistance for eco-developmental activities in the in the why not but unfortunately they thought that okay you have to green you have to go for painting uh, green uh, your houses should be painted green and you know you cannot sell your property and you know so many and you cannot have roads you cannot have tourism several uh, uh, news you know were aired uh, by the media as well as uh, the uh, other people also you know like uh, the politicians there but when we briefed them of the the concept of buffer they said oh, okay we want it now i said wait now use uh, you have to see that you know whatever you have injected among the people are gone so that is important so this is basically the core and the buffer so you have the core and you have the buffer and in the buffer you see what is exactly there it can, everything can be there but you cannot have the industries and other red listed programs cannot be there and all your activities should be uh, helpful for biodiversity conservation that is the most important part of it you can have everything but it should be it should not be at the expense of the biodiversity or it should not be at the expense of the wildlife in that area but you have uh, better uh, opportunities you know once you declare an area as a buffer so this is in brief uh, the uh, a sort of introduction to the uh, tiger now what is happening around now you have the tiger conflict uh, i don't know whether you can call it as a human tiger conflict in some of the situations the conflict is the it's a state of mind uh, if you consider it, uh, anything as a conflict it is a conflict otherwise you can probably call it as interaction yes that's also possible and then along with the public uh, uh, even including social media you have the problems of spreading the wrong messages and you know you are in trouble and probably there is not many people to to support tiger or any other wildlife so this is i think you know presently uh, i mean these uh, situations always change currently we feel that you no know, tiger co conflict is a problem but conflict is considered to be a byproduct or a product of fragmentation loss of connectivity and the intrusion to the wilderness and the tourism is also considered to be a major issue and uh, land use changes are considered to be a major issue and uh, uh, the social characteristics of the, the people there the attitude of the people is a problem and uh, in some places i mean in most of these places you have a network of roads leading to more tourism and people always tend to go closer and closer and to get a, a very good maybe a photograph or a, uh, sometimes to have a better or bitter experience so that you know they can claim it in the social media that yeah we had we had been attacked by tiger uh, so in most of these areas wherever you look at uh, you have the conflict you know it is in human dominated landscape but recently with the covid 19 issues long more number of reports are coming out we had uh, a webinar again like this organized by manorama yeah malayalam manorama uh, where see the issue was discussed and you know if you look at uh, most of the areas adjacent to forest areas you know even tiger reserve or whatever it is even a forest area you will find that most of these areas are currently undisturbed it looks like a wilderness with no human activity and it it is with a lot of shrubs and the herbs and undercover and because nobody is going around so no presence of human beings and no smell of human beings animals started moving to uh, such areas so that's interesting i think uh, maybe that is the reason and there are issues you know like a uh, lot of people are actually saying that we have the animals uh, appearing in the in the, even in the cities that is because now only you are looking for that we have uh, i think even a mass small and in civet sighted on the road of a uh, town or whatever areas has been highlighted as a very important thing a lot of sightings have been there earlier also but the only thing you know we didn't see it and probably we didn't highlight it that's all possible most of these animals so i think uh, uh, so, uh i think uh, we can probably go for a discussion or uh, whatever can i
Shall we go for a discussion now, Dhruv? Ah, yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, it's a time for us to ask questions. Uh, I think like... I don't know whether it was enough for a, uh, allow notification to send notification. Yes, I think I don't know everything. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, yeah, for everyone, this is the time to ask questions. So, Sandeep, like, we will do it uh, uh, in the question answer, I mean, in the, in the chat, right, the questions. Chat. And then... mm, I guess it should be fine, like, if people can ask questions in the chat, or if someone wants to uh, ask the question in person, that also can be done, I guess. Okay, fine, fine. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, I am Hamid from Faro College. I, I, anyway, I didn't get it. Hamid from Faro College, sir. Okay, Hamid. Yeah. <laughs> sir, okay, fine, sir. Very nice presentation, sir. So I have a, I have a doubt that uh, as per the recent survey, uh, the maximum tigers was portrayed in Vayanadu, no? recorded from Vayanadu. Mm. But the area is very less in contrast to the Periyar Tiger Reserve. Mm. Uh, but moreover, uh, why this kind of a uh, high number of uh, tigers in Vainadu? Is it because of the connections between Nagarhole and Mudumale, or availability of territory, or the prey, depletion, prey high availability of the prey? Moreover, See, moreover, the, uh, sir, moreover, the high conflict is there in the Vainadu. Hmm. Human conflict is no, high in the question, question of having more number of tigers, you know, I think yeah. one figure. But whatever figure I have officially, I heard it is only around 73 or 75. But today, I think some channel has been showing from 123 or 125. I don't know from where it is. Anyway, uh, maybe the why not as a landscape? If you look at that, you have the connectivity, as you mentioned, you know, you have the connectivity with uh, the uh, adjacent Nagarhole, Mudumale, Tiger. It's a part of a larger area, you know, for around 7,500, I mean, 12,500 square kilometers. Uh, including Satyamangalam and all those areas. So you have a larger landscape. But uh, the photographs, now the uh, some people suggest that you know, there is an increase in the population. No, need not be. I would say that you know, we had been depending on mostly earlier on pug marks and uh, uh, other uh, techniques. But currently we have the individual tigers photographed. So we have a better information. Doesn't mean that you know, just increased now. Need not be. So I would say that you, know, you have a good population of tigers. It definitely, that's a major issue in a smaller area and in a human-dominated landscape. So that is definitely a problem of concern. Uh, that is where I said that you know maybe the, the if you look at the home range of uh, tiger in Vainard, it may be less, very less compared to whatever has been published or whatever has been observed earlier. So that's a possibility. Yes, we have a problem. Now, uh, we had been concentrating, I mean, on human wildlife conflict uh, issue of management. I said that, you know, this is the result, a product of several issues, like uh, uh, the conflict factors are there, like tourism, you have the road connectivity, and you have more uh, changes in the land use, and then uh, social uh, approach of the, the people, uh, the, the uh, attitude of the people. So several things are contributing to that. But at the same time, there is a, what is the level of tolerance of the people? You have definitely a problem, not only in uh, uh, why not? Wherever conflict is there, there is definitely a problem. There is a fear among the people that you know at any time you may be attacked as I mean in inverted commas, you may be you may interact or you may come come across with an animal which may lead to your end. So that sort of fear psychosis is also there. So these are definitely issues. Now, if you look at what are the uh, the possibilities of uh, conflict mitigation, I think uh, we had been always concentrating on uh, habitat management. That is, uh, see, if you look at wildlife management as such, our uh, focus has been on uh, habitat management. We had never gone for a population management. I think it is high time that uh, we are we in india we also think about population management what is the carrying capacity it's not only of animals also of the tourism carrying capacity what's it uh, what is the total number of tiger uh, or a leopard or you just took it take it as a 
uh, as an ecosystem where you have several species around. So we have to definitely look at it. I was just wondering if you have so many tigers in Vinod, I'm surprised that we don't have much problem compared to the number of the animals there around. Because, you know, if you look at the settlements, around 110 settlements in and around, so you have a problem. And people are moving day, day in and day out. So there is another issue. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the people in such areas, such landscapes, they are also contributing. They are also sufferers, I will call it. And they are also contributing to the conservation because they are sacrificing a lot of their conveniences for the sake of conservation. They are not allowed to go out or they cannot go out in the evenings. They cannot go for a movie and then come back in the evening, come, at, come back uh, home at night. They cannot send their uh, children for a tuition at odd hours and they cannot uh, move alone in those areas. So a lot of sacrifice and you now they are, of course, losing their uh, the livestock and they are losing the, the uh, cultivated areas. Their, uh, most of these crops have been uh, destroyed. A lot of uh, contribution is there. These have to be, sometimes we may have to compensate for such loss. And we may have to see that they are not suffering because they are conserving for all the people. And all these, all of us should join together to, to support them and uh, for such things. So wherever we need population management, we may have to adopt for that. There are a lot of discussions going on on uh, the how to go for uh, artificial I mean, uh, control of populations of monkeys and I mean, elephants and other things. We have never thought about that in the case of tiger. Maybe something else, possibly. And there are uh, guidelines you know, issued by National Tiger Conservation Authority to declare uh, a tiger a manager. So there are guidelines you know, which says that you know, these parameters should be satisfied before declaring an animal a uh, manager. So there are several issues. I think uh, along with these things, uh, maybe uh, most of us are definitely finding fault with the people with citing history, saying that they're all encroaches. Yes, they're all encroaches. They had been encroaches. We had been encroaches. Most of us are occupying marshy areas, once marshy areas, and most of us are occupying once uh, uh, forest areas. Possible. Everything is possible. But let us not forget it. Let us think about it for future uh, references. But at the same time, let us also face it as a present situation. What is the current situation and how do we face it? I think you know, that should be given more importance and more I mean, more priority. Uh, so, Hamid, I don't think I have uh, uh, completely answered your query, but yes, we have a problem. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, uh, there is a question uh, in the chat box. Uh, it's by uh, PC Rajiv. Uh, excellent insights into the topic, sir. Uh, who are the major stakeholders for tiger conservation in India? Question number one. Uh, second one is white tiger another species? Why? Is white tiger. White tiger another species? No, no, no. White tiger is not considered as uh, uh, another species. I think you know recently there was also a red tiger reported. These are all uh, genetic uh, changes, you know, happening, but it's not a, a separate species. Uh, now the question was the first one was, who are the major stakeholders? Well, everybody is a stakeholder. See the fellows sitting uh, very close to the tiger range, or the fellow is uh, staying inside the tiger reserve is the major stakeholder. But we consider that we are also stakeholders sitting in the cities and talking about conservation, and also we are also the stakeholders, you know, because we are photographers and we are. Ex we appreciate it and we take photograph and enjoy. And uh, we are also, I mean, the researchers are considered to be stakeholders. So everybody is a stakeholder, but some are more important stakeholders, like the people, the, the, the people around the area, the people who had been depending on these areas. So that is why while declaring a tiger reserve, uh, the, uh, the, the Protection Act say that it should not be at the cost of the rights of the people. So that is very, very crucial. So you have to have definitely, you have to think of uh, such rights also because the stakeholders, the immediate stakeholders, that is very, very crucial. Everybody is a stakeholder, but the people in the area, they are the most important stakeholders. 
but unfortunately the stakeholders uh, only in some part of kerala we have we are giving importance to the stakeholders at least at the time of preparing the tiger conservation plan we give we go for a lot of discussions with the stakeholders with the eco development committees and with the, the <coughs> gram sabhas and also with the people's representatives uh, and take their input and uh, tell them what exactly we plan and uh, what are their uh, comments on that but in other places there is no stakeholder uh, uh, participation there is no uh, consultation uh, so i think you know we do better that way yes uh Thank you, we sir. have no more, more. We have more wildlife and conservation. How can I photograph? What is that? Sir, I am very Kindly tell to the photographers what they do and don'ts during their photograph on tigers. What is that? Kindly so you tell to the photographers about the huh? do's, do's and don'ts during their photograph on tiger and other species. No, I didn't get. Uh, is it Viramani? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Viramani sir is asking about do's and don'ts uh, for photography. Yeah, yeah, see, these are the important uh, things, you know, everybody, not only photographer, but others also. I remember there had been uh, instances earlier, long back, where people will have a uh, hide uh, in uh, different places and then go for uh, sitting there and then photographing animals. This has happened even in the case of birds. Uh, uh, they, they used to have hide on the top of the tree, near, very near to the nest of a bird, and then take photograph. There are issues uh, where people used to bait even. And I heard that you know, even now people are using it, had been using it, and it has come out anyway. So in some places, definitely people are using such things, which is not ethical i mean there is some kind of ethics in all these things in you know, photography also it is happening but i don't think uh, see uh, i always say that you no know, there was a time when naturalists were making a lot of observations if you look at uh, the old issues of bombay natural history society or uh, body Lawn's book and a lot of volumes all the volumes so you will see that it is not a phd in wildlife or phd in mammals or phd in uh, birds you know who had contributed it is mostly by the naturalists. So there was a time when people, naturalists, had been contributing. Uh, and at the same time, there had been, uh, uh, afterwards, you know, it became uh, the professionals used to contribute. And then it became the photographers who are contributing. Now, I think, you know, it is mostly the, it's a combination of everybody. It's everybody is contributing. But at the same time, there are people who are claiming unethically that you know i have been there and i used to do wonders i don't think it's to become a hero uh don't bluff uh, i think you know anybody who can understand who who knows the wildlife and who knows the forest they will understand you know what is uh, correct and what is not correct or what is bluffing and what is not bluffing so i think you know that that's not a problem i uh, but at the same time i would request the photographers not only to just photograph, but make observations. And I think you know they should publish. I don't know, not publish as a photograph, but maybe some uh, observations. They are, because they are be, they, they are uh, having a, a, a special privilege in most of the areas. They are moving in different places. So I think you know that's a very 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 good opportunity for them to make observations also. So I think uh, very few people do that. Uh, I think uh, even with a photograph, you can have a comment also, at least, on these things. So that would be interesting. I don't know whether uh, Viramani, whether I had replied. Uh, sir, there was a question by uh, Vishnu Tavara. Uh, you have already answered uh -huh. it. It is more or less similar to what uh, Viramani sir asked. His question was, we have more wildlife photographers than conservationists. How can a photographer uh, help in tiger conservation? That, I uh, think, you know, yeah, I just saw it and it immediately disappeared. So, uh, by Tavara. Uh, yeah, Vishnu Tavara. Uh, yeah. No, I think this is an interesting, uh, because if you look at this whole thing, unfortunately, we feel that wildlife is only in forest. No, it is there or in our surroundings. Currently, a lot of photographs are coming from their homesteads around their home or around their village. 
because people cannot go move, go out. I think you know that is also crucial. It's not enough that you know you have to go always to the wilderness and then say that oh, I've been. And again, people always feel proud to be in Periyar or Parambikulam, not in Chimoni, not in Pichi. So we have so-called Brahmin wildlife sanctuaries and tiger reserve. You know where we, people will feel that okay, these are the areas to be visited. We are not interested to document things in uh, sacred groups. We are not interested to document things. Very few people document it in uh, mangroves. And of course, uh, people like Vijesh are concentrating in Kadalundi and other places also. Very good. I think, you know, these are the things, you know, which we, one should do. I think I saw another uh, uh, Tiger census. I think somebody asked about it. Hello. Is it there? Sandu? Uh, yeah, uh, before that, sir, there is another question by Shyamala K. Uh, the question is, like white tiger, does black tiger exist? Oh, yeah, yeah. Black tiger is there. I have, in fact, a photograph also of that. Uh, I got it from a, a camera trap photograph from Similipal, where I was a member of the Tiger Conservation Foundation of Similipal in Odisha. Uh, so I had, uh, uh, there are uh, black tigers also. But I am told by uh, my friends in Wildlife Institute of India, they had photograph from Sundarbans also of uh, black tigers. Uh, these are there in different places. I remember there was an agitation and the, uh, uh, lobbying in news, through newspapers when a black panther was about to, in in uh, Trishur Zoo was about to be shifted to Trivandrum Zoo. Ah, this is a very rare one and you know we should know. So something like that. So I think you know people mistake it. So black tigers are also there. These are all freak that is there. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, next question by Gida K. Uh, very informative talk. Thank you, sir. Uh, do you think tiger conservation in India has reached an ideal condition, a model for conservation for other animals? Dr. Gida. I think yes. But look at, uh, I always uh, make this statement. It is just because tiger is considered to be a flagship and tiger is something, you know, which is preferred by everybody all around. All over the world. Maybe I would say that it is because of the the the, the white skin people have a uh, have a uh, sort of uh, passion for such uh, animals like tiger. Otherwise, you know, I don't think uh, if you want to declare an area uh, for uh, king cobra, nobody will support. Uh, forget about uh, cons the so-called conservationists who are talking about biodiversity. Also, it is not their priority. It doesn't come as a priority. But so, if you look at uh, these animals like tiger, definitely it is uh, tiger conservation has become a model. Mostly because tiger conservation had the international support, tiger conservation had the political support from within India, within the country. Tiger conservation had the support of the conservationists and the NGOs and everybody. So it is definitely a, a combination of all these things have helped. Uh, of course, you know, uh, it need to be taken up uh, uh, at a different level. Uh, maybe it is also because, you know, you have the support of the, the people in the surrounding areas and within the tiger reserves because they are also benefited. That, uh, uh, what is that, you know, joining the dots report had gone very it was very good because in the sense that there was a stress on the people's participation in conservation and in the form of eco development committees and you know the, the eco development has of course you know even before that there were eco development programs under world bank uh, but this has given more stress on uh, eco development and people's participation in conservation uh, and it has led to the guidelines of the, how to prepare a tiger conservation plan, which is normally called uh, the management plan uh, in a sanctuary and national park, but tiger conservation plan in the case of a tiger reserve. So it was also very good. And at least in some places, but there are failures, you know, as usual, there are definitely failures, you know, that Sariska was a failure. And uh, there was a problem in Panna for some time. So in several places, you have a problem. And say, for example, in Jharkhand, in some places, you have a problem. Uh, forget about uh, the participation of the people. There may not be even participation of officials in the or other stakeholders, other line departments like a veterinary, animal, um, animal uh, health or uh, any other department. But Kerala is different, definitely. I think it is a good model. Uh, for the whole of India, yes, it is. 
but it is also because of the leadership quality. Say, uh, the, the, this has gained uh, momentum. I would say that you now the, the whole tiger conservation scenario in India uh, was considered to be important also, also because of the, the leadership of Dr. Rajesh Gopal, who was the member secretary at that time, and who is with the Global Tiger Forum now. So yeah, all these contribute, and there are watchdogs like media. <coughs> you cannot go wrong in some places, I mean, in, in any cases, because you know there are people watching uh, for such, because we are pumping in lots of money. Crores of rupees have been spent for conservation. And it's not this tiger, the beneficiary is the entire wildlife, and definitely that is there. Hi, sir, yeah, can I ask? Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Sorry. Hey, hi, sir. My, Amir. Name, my name is Amir. Uh, I have a question about yeah. the tiger behavior. So, I have actually observed in company, there is no data, I just observed that uh, there are a lot of tigers, many tigers actually share their territory in Kabani tourism zone, where basically it's a small area. And uh, sometimes some weird thing, I, I felt it's a weird thing that uh, sometimes the adult uh, cub of a mother, after leaving the mother also, she come back and join with the mother and the, the new litters. And it's like, you know, they are like a family again, like a reunion kind of thing. And I read that tiger is a tiger actually, they uh, wandered lon loneliness and they want their own territory. So uh, this uh, territory overlapping is a behavior of because of the geography. And uh, my question, you other mean, question is that uh, other places like, you know, some other core areas in some uh, tiger reserves, the same thing happened. So that's a question. You mean to say that, you know, the, the, uh, the cups, uh, uh, after becoming an, a subadult, or uh, uh, then they come back and then join the uh, the uh, female. And not only that, other tigers also actually sharing the t uh, territory of uh, other tigers. <laughs> now, see, there is a problem because there is always females' uh, territory or uh, home range uh, is overlaps. It is always the, because there will be more tigers. Females will be around. Uh, within the uh, territory or home range of a male tiger. So that is possible. Maybe that is what you are mentioning. Or you may need a more uh, elaboration. I've seen, I've seen four that. females actually sharing kind of the same, uh, I mean, the edges of the territories. And, mm. my, and I'm asking, the uh, maybe like you know, in Peria, the same thing happened. Uh, and the other question, the tiger's behavior changed. No, 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 Peria are saying what happened? Uh -huh. uh, Periyar, what happened? You know, I'm asking in Periyar or some other place, the same thing will happen. My, my main question is that the uh, behavior of the tiger changed based on the, depends on the geography they live. That is a question. No, see, basically the surroundings and the environment will have definite impact on tiger uh, or any other species that is there. Uh, but uh, I didn't get the complete details of what you had been talking about. Maybe in the later we can definitely have a uh, more details oh, oh, on not, not a problem. Sure. You can collect uh, my email ID from uh, them and you know, we can definitely do that. Cool, not a problem. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. It was yeah. very nice. Yeah, yeah. Who, who else is there? Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. There are some I think more questions. Saw... Yeah, there are some more questions. Before that, uh, uh, Susmit Krishnan wants to ask you a question uh, like via online. Susmit, bye. Hello. Hello. Hello, so Smith by Indoc. Okay, sir, I'll move on to the next question then. Uh, uh, okay, conservation model. There is a yeah. question about uh, how to participate in tiger population yeah, there, or something. There are, there are two questions uh, which is more or less similar. One is by Dr. Rajiv. Method for tiger census, how can we contribute to a tiger census? Question number one. And uh, one second, there is one more question similarly. Yeah, Shiva Kumar, uh, is there any registration for taking part in tiger census conducted by the forest department? If yes, how to apply? Uh, I am a wildlife photographer from Palakkad. These are two questions. Hmm. Are you seeing this? Uh, the uh, tiger, I, I told you earlier that you know, tiger population estimation has been, we had been depending on uh, the uh, on the pugmark 
I don't know whether you are seeing this uh, my screen in the screen. Sir, you have to present. Uh, have been... Present oh, now. I have... Present now. Where is it? Uh, on the bottom right. Sir, of the bottom right. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'll take only. Yes. Now I think you can see that now. Uh, not yet, but I guess no, it's coming. Hmm. See, we had been depending on uh, the Taiga pugmas, you know, for population estimation long back, and we will sit down the with a pugma tracer on the glass. We will draw it and then we will make comparison and then we started doing it on uh, uh, plaster of Paris mold was taken and then we had been making measurements and then doing that. But afterwards, you know, we started uh, uh, I'm currently with a lot of research and with a lot of experience and with a lot of input from different people who had been working on Tiger. Uh, uh, there are uh, programs, uh, there are uh, certain protocols. Uh, already in existence for monitoring program of Tega. So uh, in the phase one is basically field survey where we are collecting, we can also call it as a sign survey. We are taking evidences of Tega, prey species, it can be direct sighting or indirect sighting. Then we are looking at the status of vegetation and then indices of human disturbance, you know, like uh, cattle or uh, human presence, uh, everything is. So that is being done. And then, of course, you know, we had been doing it earlier. I don't know whether you are seeing it now. Uh, not yet, sir. I don't know yeah. what happened. Yeah. Oh, we had been... Oh, you are not seeing? No, sir. Okay. Anyway, uh, then we started uh, looking at the stripes. Uh, using camera trap, we had been taking. Uh, this is a technique called mark uh, recapture or capture recapture, where uh, uh, this technique has been in use you know, for a long time for smaller animals like rats or rodents and other animals. But we started using it for tiger also. So, because the stripe is different for each animal. But earlier we thought, okay, only one side is required. One side of the animal is enough. But then we have started uh, using both sides because there could be differences. So, the stripe was used as the, the, uh, the criteria uh, for identifying individuals. Now, and, and then the second phase is looking at the vegetation, the status of vegetation, and everything through the using the satellite imageries and then satellite photographs. So in the third phase, we are actually going for uh, surveys in uh, using camera traps. Are you seeing, uh, Sandeep? No. Not yet, sir. It's still like that. Can you just try once again with the present now? Yeah, yeah I'll just... At least this. You can stop, easy. share, and try some. I think. I stop, have... share. Okay, yeah, st click stop, share, and present now. Okay. Right. Present now. But your present now is already there. I bet more or stop sharing on the Chido because I'm not on Udi Chidal. Stop sharing in Ghana. I'm not seeing it. Okay. Share in the present now. Click here. Don't you? Present now, because it is now blurred or what? Mm. Turn on captions, no. No, 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 no. Anyway, there is some problem. Uh, I think now we have shifted to, so here the sampling unit is actually the grids. So the entire area will be gridded, means, you know, will be uh, plotted uh, two square kilometer. Earlier it is four square kilometer grid. So say, for example, if you take uh, Vinar, you will divide the entire area into grids of uh, two square kilometer. And each grid will be having at least one camera trap uh, placed. So a lot of uh, camera traps have been used, have been in use, you know, and uh, then taking photographs and then uh, there are uh, softwares available for uh, uh, basically to uh, analyze this data of uh, photographs. So that is the technique. Now on the question of how to participate, 
See, in 92, I, I was the organizer for the wildlife population estimation or wildlife census in Kerala with the uh, participation of around 1,400 volunteers trained and, you know, uh, that was a, definitely a, a revolution in the whole of India. And, you know, it was praised in so many meetings of Ministry of Environment and uh, Forest at that time. That time. And we just, uh, we, we actually followed that for a long time. But then what happened? Nothing happened because then slowly it has started diluting. That you no know, people, uh, I mean, uh, concerned folks started using, the, I mean, using their own people or their own friends for uh, population estimation. Uh, currently also, uh, except Irrevikulam National Park for the Nilgiri Tar population estimation. We don't use the word census. We use population estimation. That is what I am always stressing, population estimation. Uh, except for uh, Irrevikulam and for Nilgiri Tar population estimation, I don't think uh, there is any uh, participation of the people. But in in some places like uh, uh, Periyar and Perambikulam, to some extent they, they use. Uh, but to see uh, that you can participate only in the science survey, tiger population estimation, only in the science survey you can participate. Camera traps are long-term programs of monitoring you know you are setting up the camera trap and then uh, collecting it and then uh, you are uh, uh, downloading the photographs whatever you have so that's a uh, prolonged process uh, where uh, people like uh, conservation biologists you know that time i took mentioned about uh, viramani and in some places you know there are conservation biologists who are participating in such area in such exercises so that is how it is done otherwise you can definitely participate in other uh, things. I think, you know, this uh, participation of the public is very good because, first of all, they feel a, part, a sort of uh, feeling of participation. Second is, they also feel responsible for something. Third, they get an opportunity to see the, the beauty of the area. It's not enough that I always see this and I always enjoy. You should allow the people also to enjoy to some extent without affecting the... the, uh, the uh, calmness or uh, the beauty, the naturalness of the area. So I think that also will help conservation. But how and we, I don't think the so-called ecotourism, what we call it as a responsible tourism or whatever responsible tourism you are doing has anything because the no visitor is going back with any information, with no more knowledge uh, added to his uh, uh, information. So I think we have to do that. Probably that is very good. Uh, I think, you know, I am stressing every time I stress that, yes, there should be participation in the elephant population estimation also. And another thing, you know, which at least there will be sort of uh, credibility to the whole exercise because there is participation of the public. Uh, otherwise, you know, people will feel that, oh, these are all cooked up, uh, which is no more there because, you know, the, the forest officials are also comparatively better educated and better aware. Of course, there are people in all sectors, you know, so likewise, that is a possibility. Yeah, I'm sorry that I couldn't show you this slide. I don't know what happened. Uh, so, uh, another question. Sir, I heard uh, a lot of hype about Kallana intervandram, and someone was saying it is related to pygmy elephants. Any truth mm -hmm. or is that a myth? <laughs> Anyway, uh, Sandeep, what was the place you know where I went for that uh, defendant special group meeting in Malaysia? Uh, Sabah. Uh, Sabah. Sabah area, you know, where we have the Elephas Maximus. What is that? Anyway, uh, the island. So that was the place, you know, where uh, people always used to feel that, you know, this is the elephant, you know, the pygmy, the so called pygmy elephant. But I saw the pygmy elephant and it is. It is as good as a normal elephant. Most of the elephants are around eight to nine feet tall. And uh, a researcher, a lady who has been working there, I also asked her and she said, yeah, this is what we call the elephant. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, the Kalana. Kalana has been seen only by two people, the photographer and uh, the uh, Malan Kani. Nobody else has seen. We had been there and I think uh, one, one of my... Uh, colleague, I think everybody knows him, Sabu Jahaz, you know, he had spent a lot of time in that area searching for Kalana. 
uh, with no use. And there was a team sent by Tamil Nadu also, by that time, conservative Mr. Nilagan from Kalakad also. And they also failed. And we had been asking these guys, you know, the, the Kani, who has been mentioning that, yes, there is Kalana, uh, at least to show us the, the, the dung of Kalana. It should be smaller then, if it is there. He couldn't. And uh, in one of the cases where uh, there was a media also was, uh, I mean, channel was discussing Kalana and a friend of mine called me saying that, oh, you, did you see the channel? Uh, they are discussing about Kalana in uh, the Trivandrum area. And uh, are you, where are you now? I said, I am just near the Kalana. And that Anna was a juvenile elephant and had uh, some problems of diarrhea. And it was, uh, its herd was uh, close by. And this fellow could not move and we were thinking of capturing it uh, but then doctor said you know let us not capture it now because it, it cannot take the drug next day the doctor and his team went there and then captured it without immobilization it they just captured with a rope and then brought it to it is there in Vinod now and uh, it's, uh, genetics uh, its blood was tested and everything was done it is just normal elephant that was the one you know which is considered to be a kalana when uh, standing there, because you know we went there after a heavy lunch, you know we didn't expect to go for a trucking at that time. But after a heavy lunch, while we were we had been cursing a forest office, a, a senior forest officer, I mean an additional PCC at that time, and me and the doctor, we had been climbing the hills and you know and uh, cursing because after a heavy lunch, you know we had to go for. We went there after a wildlife uh, advisory board meeting also. And when we reached there, no, this is just a normal elephant. And then I said, I want to kill that Kalan Mani. I said, <laughs> Malan Kani, actually. Uh, he said, I am here. I said, no, why do you call it as a uh, uh, pygmy elephant or dwarf elephant or Kalana? Sir, it is smaller. I said, you know, your uh, baby is a smaller one. Do you really call it as a Kalana or Kalmanichan or whatever? He said, ah, that is how it is. So most of these are just... As it stands now, there is no. Among the tribals, among the Khanis, only this man knows it. Only he claims to have seen. Nobody else. And only one photographer has seen it. Nobody else has seen it. So I don't think uh, it's a reality. It's a myth. I will call it as a myth. Uh, okay, thank you, sir, anyway. about that. So, so I just have one question. So these pygmy elephants are genetically different or like they're almost same with... Uh... Uh, Indian, I mean, they, they want to know which is seen in Bali area. I know for uh, uh, not Bali, what is it? Eh, sometimes uh, memory. Borneo? Elephas Borneo. Ah, oh, Borneensis. Borneo. Elephas Maximus Borneo. We went to that habitat of Borneo, elephant in Borneo. Elephas Maximus Borneensis. Because I had been with the tiger all the time today. So, <laughs> Elephas Maximus Borneensis. It is considered to be a different species. I mean, it was considered to be Eliphas Maximus. But then there had been some genetic work, uh, especially by people from Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, so, and others, you know, they had uh, done some genetic studies and they said it, it's a different subspecies, Eliphas Maximus Borneensis. We had a discussion in the elephant species group on whether uh, it is a subspecies or what is the conservation value of this subspecies. Anyway, we consider currently we consider it as Elephas maximus borneensis, a separate subspecies. Uh, see, isolation, it's an interesting thing. I think you should also read it. You should not end up with a webinar. You should also go and read on isolated populations. Isolated populations are interesting. Island population, which has been in isolation for a longer period. What will happen to such things? Say, for example, Idiki, elephant population with no connectivity to the adjacent areas. What is happening to that population? Is there any change in the genetic status? So is there any change in the, in the whole aspect of it? Or in the, in the, what do you call uh, the, the body size and everything? Uh, the, the smaller ones in the mainland becomes larger in the islands and the larger ones become smaller ones. So this is a general statement I make, but I think this is very, very interesting, interesting topic. Isolated populations are prone to extinction is a different thing. Uh, smaller populations because of inbreeding and you know, small population will become smaller and then ultimately leading to extinction is a, that extinction vortex is there. But at the same time, here, uh, the smaller populations are very, very interesting. 
in the long run, what will happen to these populations? And there are also uh, historical uh, evidences of saying that these elephants in Borneo had been brought from elsewhere by the kings and then released there. So a lot of uh, uh, records are also, they, they talk about the history of these elephants in Borneo. <coughs> so I think you know, that is how it is. But you said, you know, is it a different species? It says different subspecies. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, Smit by Odondo. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Yes, you, you came back. Uh, okay, so Smith question. Yeah. Uh, uh, sir, Santa Claus is a school of the other one. Santa Claus is a school of the other one. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yes, thank you, thank you. And there is some children. He tiger is on the pain tiger is on the pain of 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 the after they said the Alagale, Yadata, Tiger Conservation Luna, Agatile. Rend Iper in the Peripik in the Department of Kanakala, E. Tiger Reserve in the Pedal Kitavana, funding in the Pedal. About E. Pedal Sara, the Palapurm Repression Dakana, Savarna General Cadil, BD in Dakana. Then Namata Repression or in the Sarva Nevadani, Island to the Light Puno, E. Mate Cardula, Nature Island, Cherdam Valido, Island to the Puno, Purusan Other conservative the Tortosin I go to Galevenda. Palapurm E. Pedal and Persona. And there is some share. I don't know. No, you are right. Karnam, uh, Silent Valley is not a Silent Valley is not a buffer. It is a buffer. It is a protest. But there is a buffer. It 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 is a buffer. Silent Valley is a buffer. It 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 is a Gradually, it moved to Bhavani Wildlife Sanctuary. Apo, e buffer under the forest officer is in the buffer and the end of the emperor is a can yang, where Alo now can't look my you buffer on the borough to room psychological fear. A lingual psychological barrier and dog not in the one. Panatum sanctuary in the criterion restrictions were no end of the wonder, fine objections under. Yan with Iron Bram, Karimbura. Kerlai, Ariel, Karimbura, Ariadi, New Maramalatin, Bangla. Wildlife sanctuary to declare in the Prathamiga, the Malabar Naturalist Society members, Nyana and their report to Muru and Edith, and the first report on what is a proposal. Karimbura Wildlife sanctuary to declare in India. Other in the general Mumbai present in the Lagri and the Jaffer and Satyan Mapay, Malabar Natural Society, the Korea Kanda Rajesh, Angla Korea Pereka Kudi, Yana is not present either. A Padan Mumbai Angla Korche, Panjay members in him block Nuka representatives in Angandu, and the Aryans are Nangandu. A power of a cup are near them. A power of a land, a low opinion number. Kola, another idea, and Karam Pande area or a bird sanctuary Akanam and the letter proposal. Apabila itu kerimbau ada banyak sekali. Jadi, kalau ada banyak bangunan itu, yang kita lalui mapan nak kumpul dengan plantation, yang kita lakukan area yang kita mati itu. Apabila mall lalu new amer amer, mana saya connectivity from Milgris to Mukurti, I mean Silent Valley to Mukurti. Nalai sahaja dalam selama nalai di dalam. Ini presentation anda buat apa? Anda buat di satu hall lalu presentation apa? Ini kerja yang lakukan di sini, di sini ada kerja yang sama orang. Anda, anda ini tali itu sam orang lalu. Human Wildlife Conflict in the Perle, Martin the Moli character and Atmahatia Bishni Moraki. And then the DFO would have a DFO boiler and DFO carry out a channel in the Isle of the Jordan. What happened then? This was presented, and the people, the politicians who had been supporting us, including Adam, sir, Adam, uh, no, we cannot allow anything. When I asked him personally what happened, you know, see, yesterday there was an issue. You cannot support it now. As a politician, I cannot support it now. We will take it up later. Anyway, 
currently so there is a there is a fear among the people that you know the moment you hear that you know it's a wildlife sanctuary then there is a whether you call it a tiger reserve or a sanctuary or national park or whatever it is it is there animals are there the habitat is there everything is there so i think and i should uh, tell you recall uh, escape at guard while writing on uh, his uh, travel uh, details you know he had mentioned in one of the places he has mentioned kalyani kutti mudi jerichu kettiyalum nivarthi kettiyalum kalyani kutti kalyani kutti adhe ningal idina sanctuary nu varano national park nu varano whatever you call it it is still an area with so many animals with with uh, so many tigers with so many leopards and by declaring it as a tiger reserve or a sanctuary or a national park the animal population is not going to be increased maybe protection will be there there may be some vested interest because you know there will be uh, restrictions of free movement now i think you know here also we should also think about another issue what is so special about a sanctuary or a national park do you think you know the status of a reserve forest given to an area is bad reserve forest is also equally protected under the indian forest act you cannot just roam around unfortunately we feel that reserve forest can be encroached but not a national park sanctuary or a tiger reserve <laughs> reserve forest you can do any illegal activity but not in other areas so this is the sort of attitude or maybe ignorance i would say that nobody has told anybody because you know we also feel that an area is protected only if it is a tiger reserve sanctuary or national park malatur is not protected not because it is a sanctuary or national park walichal is not protected or uh, maybe nearby areas of uh, mangulam is not protected just because it is national park or sanctuary it is not and most of the areas it is protected it is protected as a reserve forest so the status of an area as a reserve forest is also not bad it is very good i don't know whether i oh. Oh, yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you thank you thank you sir sir ini korcha ana kadagal okke ait adutha session pradeshikkunu okay let us do that anyway sitting here yeah. now i am just uh, correcting some thesis and then writing some reports and other things so this is definitely a good interaction because otherwise you know it will get rusty you know i will forget everything and you will forget <laughs> yes, 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 yes. okay sir okay sir thank you sandeep thank you sandeep thank you sir thank you sir okay okay sir uh, thank you very much sir adu pole idile chat box sir onnu തുറന്ന് നോക്കിക്കോളൂട്ടെ സാർ ചാറ്റ് ബോക്സ് നോക്കി നാൽപ്പത്തി മൂന്നെണ്ണം കാണുന്നുണ്ട് അല്ല അത് വീരമണി സാർ ആയ വീരമണി ജോയിന്റ് അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ കുറെ കാണുന്നുണ്ട് അല്ല ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ഒരു വിധം ഒക്കെ വായിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് സാർ ഇപ്പൊ സാർ ഒരുപാട് പേര് ഇപ്പൊ രാജേഷ് സാർ മഞ്ജു മിസ് അവരെല്ലാം വിഷസ് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് ദ മേജർ സ്ട്രൈക്ക് ഹോൾഡേഴ്സ് പറഞ്ഞു കവേർഡ് ഓൾ ദി ഏരിയാസ് ഇൻ ഷോർട്ട് ടൈം എക്സ്പെക്റ്റിംഗ് മോർ വെബിനാർ ശിവകുമാരെ വിഷ്ണു തേവരയുടെ നമ്മൾ റിപ്ലൈ ചെയ്തു ശ്യാമള ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് എല്ലാം ഞാൻ വായിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു സാർ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞത് സാറിന് വിഷ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് അതൊന്ന് കാണാൻ വേണ്ടി ഓൾവേ i think uh, uh, this there, there question is, yes there is one question sir yeah, um, yeah I, i i put it there actually i libai also wanted to ask that so why lion mm. is limited to gujgir when tiger could survive in many parts of india is it due to its behavior or something else no i think uh, it is interesting because uh, i was also looking for an answer in fact uh, we may have to i have to look at uh, in more into that maybe in another webinar on elephant or some other topic we will discuss this thing but you have the problems uh, i was also wondering if you look uh, travel through tamil nadu you will see the land and even in kerala in some places you will see the land as a, on the on the uh, gate uh, and you will see the land statues in so many places but how it came we don't know i mean maybe history is very very interesting uh, looking at the ecological history which i call normally it is very very interesting uh, so gear maybe because of the habitat but you have the similar habitat elsewhere also now the land has started moving around to other areas also 
possibly we'll have to see how the the i think you know the lands have started from somewhere i have read it but i don't uh, remember that now completely started moving from where from where does it uh, spread to africa and other regions i think i have a paper also on that i'll have to check it okay sure sir uh, i don't think it is behavior but currently they have started moving out from there yeah so uh, i just read long back very long back about uh, behavior statement but that's uh, that's not very scientific what they are saying is like uh, this uh, uh, tiger or other cats are like elusive but like uh, lions like just to walk in the in the open daylight so it's easy to hunt them it is fine so, again you know that is fine uh, that is why i said you know the habitat but uh, there is another question there are similar habitat elsewhere also but then why is it not happening and again why only this island how did it reach there or was it evolved there so many questions okay. are there it will be interesting yes, to yes. look at it anyway such questions should provoke even the presenter to go for more answers <laughs> and we will do that oh rajesh is also there rajesh kp yeah yes sir we are here Manju is also there. Oh, great! Hello, sir. Special to you. Hey, sir, ne cake and then the sandosh under lo. Ravish. Yeah, ni puru mukum hari Rajesh Manju na ke kandu. Manju si. All friends and you know this is very good. It's a good opportunity. I don't know whose baby was this webinar. Uh, Ali must be. Yes. Then he got the Drew also. Drew also. And then Sandeep. Very good. Very good. മഞ്ജു No, otherwise, no. do you think you know all of us will be discussing these things? It's difficult yeah. because we will never think of webinar. We will talk only about meeting in one place or a nature camp or nature camp or whatever. Uh, we won't think of uh, doing this. This is a very interesting session. Yeah, and and sir, there was a question on: uh, Is it correct to label a tiger as man-eater from Shibu? <laughs> I saw that. No, but it is like. Uh, ചില ആളുകളെ ഗുണ്ട എന്നൊക്കെ പറയണ പോലെ തന്നെ ഡിക്ലെയർ ചെയ്യണമെങ്കിൽ ഒഫീഷ്യലി ഇഫ് യു വോണ്ട് ടു ഡിക്ലെയർ ടൈഗർ എ മാനേജർ യു ഹാവ് ടു ഫോളോ സെറ്റൻ ക്രൈറ്റീരിയ ദർ ഷുഡ് ബി ഇനഫ് പ്രൂഫ് സി ഈവൻ നൗ വി ഫീൽ ദാറ്റ് എ ടൈഗർ സപ്പോസ് എ ടൈഗർ ഹാസ് ബിക്കം ഹാസ് സോ കോൾഡ് അറ്റാക് ക്യാറ്റൽ ഓർ എനിങ് യു നോ what is the demand the demand is that you know you should place a immediately place a cage and trap it but is there any board that you know this trap is meant for only for such tiger we don't know but currently of course you know they are going for a camera trap and then identifying it and if the trapped animal is not that but once an animal is trapped people will never allow you to release it back because saying that it is not a problem animal so you are in a real fix you have a problem so setting up a uh, uh, trap cage is not i don't think consider it as a solution for these things anyway uh, calling a, a, a tiger a manita there are manitas uh, especially reported mostly reported uh, from uh, what is that place uh, yeah corbett or near corbett
സന്ദീപ് സാറിനെ വിളിച്ചു നോക്കണോ ഹലോ ഞാൻ ട്രൈ ചെയ്തു ആള് ബിസി ആണ് നോക്കട്ടെ ഞാൻ വീണ്ടും ട്രൈ ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് ഓക്കെ അപ്പൊ എന്തെങ്കിലും കോള് വന്നോ കോള് വന്ന സാറിന് കട്ടാവല്ലോ എന്നാ പിന്നെ ഒരു കാര്യം ചെയ്യാം ആ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് എന്നാ നന്ദി പ്രകാശിപ്പിച്ച ശേഷം അവസാനിപ്പിക്കാം സാറിന്റെ മൈക്ക് മ്യൂട്ടിലാണല്ലോ സാർ Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, somebody wanted to ask something. Yeah, then somebody will go on. Yeah, that, they, about the man-eaters. Sir, I think it's a good thing. 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 പ്രശ്നങ്ങളൊക്കെ ഉണ്ടായിട്ട് അന്ന് ഒരു മൂവ്മെന്റ് ഒക്കെ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു അതിന്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ട് സെപ്റ്റംബറിലാണോ നവംബറിലാണോ അറിയില്ല എൻ ടി സി ഒരു ഒരു കുറിപ്പ് ഇറക്കിയിരുന്നു അതായത് ഈ മാനീറ്റർ എന്നുള്ള വാക്ക് ഉപയോഗിക്കില്ല ഡേഞ്ചറസ് ആനിമൽ എന്നുള്ളതാണ് എന്നുള്ള രീതിയിൽ അല്ല മാനീറ്റർ എന്ന് പറയണത് മാനീറ്റർ എന്ന് ഇപ്പോ പല ഫേക്ക് റിപ്പോർട്ട്സ് ആർ ഓൾസോ ദയർ സേ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ വയനാടിന് അടുത്തുള്ള തമിഴ്നാടിന്റെ ഭാഗത്ത് ഒരു ദർ വാസ് എ കേസ് നിയർ ദി സം ടി എസ്റ്റേറ്റ്സ് ഓർ സംവെയർ എ പേഴ്സൺ വാസ് എ പേഴ്സൺസ് ഡെഡ് ബോഡി വാസ് സീൻ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് കൺസിഡേർ ടു ബി ഡെത്ത് ഡ്യൂ ടു ടൈഗർ ടൈഗർ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ആറ്റിബ്യൂട്ടഡ് ടു എ ടൈഗർ അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ്ലി ദർ ഹാഡ് ബീൻ ഐ ഡോ നോ വെദർ സംബഡി പേഡ് കോമ്പൻസേഷൻ ഓർ വാട്ട് എവർ ഐ ഹാവ് നോ ഐഡിയ ബട്ട് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ടെൻ ടു ബി എ ആക്ച്വലി എ മർഡർ ബൈ ഹിസ് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഓർ സംബഡി so uh, it was attributed to a tiger there was another incident in uh, uh vayanad tirunelli area a person was seen dead and there were evidences of uh, 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 what is that you know the tusk piercing into him and you know it was considered to be an elephant uh, because of elephants and lot of agitations uh, they gheravoed the the Uh, forest officials and immediately 5 lakh or 10 lakh was paid and you know all those things were settled but the dfo had his own doubts he sent some spies and uh, the spies were spending time in the bar and you know other places ultimately they got an information that it was this fellow was killed by two of his friends after a drinking session and he was brought there and the, uh, left in the forest with uh, and used the uh, two uh, uh like uh, branches of something and then some tree and then they left it there so that is how it is a lot of problems are there whenever we hear such stories you know i have my own doubts in some cases uh, but the social issues so there are so many problems you know like uh, sometimes you cannot go deep into the issue Yes. Okay. Uh, 
there is one question in the chat about like the yeah, the mark on the back of the ear of a tiger uh, <laughs> i are... saw that it is basically see if you look at uh, the it is a characteristic of uh, tiger and it is basically a display that's it say if you look at the uh, you know sambar deer mlavane kandundo or where species in america white tail deer you are okay when there is an alarm the the pattern the tail anga pokum it is a signal to others likewise idum or or cattle's feature ana but what does it mean or what does it convey to others i think i will have to look at it but uh, there are uh, signs you know visual signs are there possibly maybe to fear or to make others frighten also that is a possibility <laughs> that you have four ear four eyes or something I'll have to see. I, I'll check it and then see. Oh, sure, sir. Hello. Uh, do we have any outstanding questions? I don't know. 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 Thanks for coming, sir. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Geeta. അബ്ദുൽ ഹമീദ് ആണെന്ന് തോന്നുന്നു അബ്ദുൽ ശ്രമിക്കുന്നത് so that's possible and i i have shown you that the monk feeding the tiger uh sir uh, so so in the same lines like uh, this uh, cheetah is very tameable right so is that one reason for the extinction of cheetah in india i i don't no know idea so. because uh, the cheetah of course you know there are a few records here and there i am against the reintroduction of cheetah because we do have enough problems with the existing animals we don't have enough money resources to protect whatever we have and you want to bring in another animal which needs thousands of square kilometers of area and okay. uh, for hunting and for uh, living these are all just fancy ideas of some people uh, i mean i don't want to name them but i had been objecting it right from the beginning from okay. delhi and in other meetings also there is no reason why we should go for a uh, so called reintroduction of cheetah so i don't think uh, we have a problem because you said you know it is is it because you know it is uh, just in captivity need not be must okay. have been hunting and also for cheetah also must have been hunted see I, recently i had uh, some uh, news and photographs of uh, leopard is being hunted uh in uh, zimbabwe and other places and uh, on a game hunting they call it a lot of people yeah. are with uh, leopard uh, live i mean uh, dead leopard on their shoulder that's very very it's not fair but at the same time you know they will say that to say for example the in the cites meeting always the african countries in some of the african countries will come up with a proposal to have uh, permission to uh, export a uh, task to china or japan for uh, uh, for money because they will say that no they say that you know we don't have money for conservation so this money can be used for conservation that is possibly another uh, thing this is uh, where the question of i am conserving for the entire world are you going to protect me are you going to support me for conservation that's a question the same similar question was asked in northeast india where a lot of proposals for check dams i'm mean, not check dams and a lot of proposals for small hydroelectric projects came up i think 100 or something like that more than that and immediately all the conservation sitting in delhi and other places said no you cannot have uh, you cannot destroy this forest you cannot uh, this is beautiful this is unique uh, everything is said they said yes we understand that but who is going to pay us for our for conserving this we cannot have roads and we cannot take patients to the hospital we had to walk around 20 30 kilometers we had to carry and we had to cross the rivers 
you won't allow me allow us roads you won't allow us uh, dams and you won't allow us like have to have access to electricity you don't allow us to go for any other uh, development but at the same time you are not ready to support us so how do you compensate for our sufferings or how do you compensate for our sacrifice very very interesting question this yeah, is yeah, what i have been asking you know about uh, why not they are contributing a lot how are you going to compensate for their contribution or uh, how their sacrifice similar questions will definitely come up everywhere yes that's very correct so so that's why like uh, there are like uh, uh, international funds to support countries like even india to to protect their say tigers right agreed you know see but should it reach should it not reach the people who are really the the important it's not okay. enough that you know you have set up so more so many camera camera traps for monitoring agreed good but how does it help the stakeholders how does it help the people in the field so you will have to say that you know you are spending money for uh eco development eco development activities are mostly confined to tiger reserves you are not addressing the real issues of these people in such areas now uh, a relocation voluntary relocation has been initiated in why not and they have already i think shifted around five settlements on a on a voluntary basis and by golden shake hand you know by paying the money of 10 lakhs per family which is defined as 18 year old and above is considered as a family whoever has a, a whoever is 18 year old is considered as a family so that is good but where and how many people can be shifted now we are asking the people from the settlements to go out we are asking the people along the road to go out because we have we are going to widen this we are asking the people to go out because we are going to have a very fast railway track okay and how much and how many places we are going to relocate and how many areas there is a justification for everything we have a justification that uh, we should not i mean we we want to inviolate areas contiguous areas here marked for conservation we agreed that is for them and for everybody agreed but should i uh, should i reach trivandrum within 3 hours from kasaragod is that the priority that's a problem everything yeah. conservation versus development it it is used to be normally say that you know we should be talking about conservation and development but a stage has come where it has gone back conservation versus development how many wetlands have to be cleared and how many um, we want aims we want uh, iit we want everything nar and we say that kerala is a narrow place we don't have in a space because the rest of the area is steep and sloppy where we cannot have houses and we cannot have still we want to demarcate thousands of acres for everything and we want to clear the wetlands so there are so many issues so what is our priority how many uh, we should have i mean are we not we don't have faith in the the normal doctors trained doctors in our uh, district hospitals and uh, taluk hospitals and public health centers and we want to have speciality hospital this is where i would say the business override all the conservation and everything yes that's correct sir. anyway this is a general issue <laughs> yeah sir uh, i think like you are talking for last uh, two hours continuously so yeah we yeah. can <laughs> give a break uh, Dhru, Dhru, there is a very interesting question shamla ask you can check that as well the last one what would be the solution to resolve man animal conflict according to you in the present scenario it should be such that both animal and man should see coexistence is something you know which we people always had been talking about and this is what we are talking about covid also we say that coexist with covid okay <laughs> conflict there is no permanent solution there is no situation called zero conflict zero conflict is not there we are trying to mitigate to a level of tolerance where we can tolerate 
See, while uh, working in, we, I had a chance to work for some three months in uh, LRK, little run of catch, where we had been asking, I was working with uh, a social scientist from uh, Center for uh, Ecological Studies in Hyderabad, says, so we had been asking them, what is, how much tolerance will you, uh, will you be happy with uh, the presence of the animals, like uh, the uh, wild ass? Gudukar, what they call Gudukar, and uh, how many, how much area can be uh, given to the animal? So there is a problem. Ten percent of my crop, okay, fine, but beyond that, I won't tolerate. And there are other social issues. I may not be happy if uh, uh, wild boar is coming. A swar ko marna hai. I want to kill the wild dog. I mean wild boar, but I am okay if Gudukar, poor fellow, he doesn't have anything. So there is an attitudinal problem. I love it. I, I want to conserve it because I love that animal. It is mine. A sort of ownership is there. In our place or in any other place, wherever conflict is there, that sort of ownership has not come. In 93, 94, when we had been doing a, a study in Maynard, uh, the, we asked the questions to the people. And most of the people said, yes, we want to conserve the elephants and tiger and everything. And also without affecting us, without harming us. I think that is a good approach. But then what could be done? Relocation is relocation from the area is a solution. Or are we going to fence the entire area? Or are we going to have a fort, construct a fort of wall? It's none of these are solutions. Now, how to live with this? That's a question. But it, it can be only site specific. It depends on the culture. It depends on the attitude of the people. It depends on the historical aspect of it. And uh, there are people say, the, uh, I asked in one of the meetings with the Karshar, uh, with the farmers in Atapadi. Uh, I asked uh, these people, why don't you ask, uh, the, why don't you engage? The, uh, they said, you know, watches are no more available. I said, you know, but uh, Adivasis are here. No, they are ready to protect. They are ready to go as watchers at night uh, to protect your crops. You know what was the answer? The answer was, oh, they even uh, go for uh, praying before the uh, elephant dung. So that is approach. Whereas another person said, I am engaging protection watchers. I have no problem. And he was a person who was awarded for the best farmer. So the attitude, everything matters. So there is nothing called permanent solution. Site specific item, we have to think of solutions and we have to take the people into confidence. But sometimes I feel that, sometimes I feel like a mother says, you know, <laughs> sometimes definitely I feel that in some places, the people are okay, but there are certain elements. There are some priests. There are some mullahs and there are other people. There are some politicians who doesn't want to solve this problem. They want to have uh, to make it uh, to to see that this problem is live. So that's a major issue. So the leaders are sometimes leading them to catastrophe. That is also a problem. OK, yeah, so that answers that video. Uh, so thank you, sir. So Alibai, so please come forward. Yeah, so any any message you want to give, sir, in brief? Uh, you are already talking for this long, so. No, 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 I think it is which is very good interaction. I yeah. enjoyed it, definitely. Uh, and yeah, you know, sure. there are some questions also, which I may have to find answers. That is also another homework given to me, like uh, the land <laughs> and the spot on the ear, on the back of the ear. So that's also good. Every session is something interesting, you know. Uh, wherever I go for a talk, I come back with a lot of questions unanswered and you know and a very good interaction i'm sure but unfortunately there was not much time left uh, uh, for people to interact uh that uh, but even two hours now not bad yeah yeah it's, that's what i was saying sir like so you're talking for two hours continuously <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that is good anyway uh okay uh, our organizer alibai uh, i'm calling him to say a thanks to start first. Okay. Alibai. 
Oh. Ah, sir, like we are expecting. Uh, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Thanks no, to sir, you uh, uh, for sorry. your patient sorry. listening. So, hope you will give us more sessions when you are free in this. Yeah, this I think season. you know. Let us have more discussions and you know yeah. more yeah. input. Yeah, zero no GVHSS. Yeah, good. So a lot of people are now appearing because others might have left already. Muhammad Ali Murikel, yes. Muhammad <laughs> Ali Murikel is our uh, our uh, Ali Bai. Ali Ali Bai. Ah, he is there. He is smiling and sitting. I think sir, mobile internet stuck. I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, mute. You can see it as mute. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Ah, ah, now active. Now active. Oh, Ali, okay. thank you. Sir, 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 Definitely, no counterism. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you so yeah. much, sir. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I think we're Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. Fine. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night, sir. Good night. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Bye.